A very warm welcome and thank you for tuning in to watch our series of the Asset Thinking Treasurers webcast. Uh, throughout the coming months, we will be bringing you conversations on finance, the treasury function, and the role of the CFO and treasurer as an enabler of businesses to adjust to the changes underway in driving business growth and efficiency. Today's episode is on automation and new technology that's driving efficiency in business processes such as electronic invoicing and presentment and payment. In the world of fast-moving consumer goods, particularly operational efficiency is a leading edge. That also means a treasury that responds to the fast-paced needs of the organization, including around working capital. Now, before we start today's conversation, a shout out to BNP Paribas, our exclusive sponsor and the winner of the Asset AAA Transaction Bank of the Year 2022. In today's episode, we are delighted to have with us uh, Odette Ribeiro, a CFO of Lactalis India, which is part of the group Lactalis, a French multinational and the largest dairy products group in the world with 2021 turnover of over 21 billion euros. Hello, Odette. Hello. Thank you for having me. Joining our conversation from BNP Paribas, we are pleased to have uh, Rupa Balsekar, Head of uh, Transaction Banking India. Lovely to see you, Rupa. Thank you, Daniel. Great to be here. Our topic is on co-creating to drive efficiency. Uh, one way businesses are using technology to optimize their treasury to become much more responsive to deliver better business decisions. Let me start with by asking uh, Odette uh, to give us a brief background on Lactalis India and the setup in the country. Lactalis India uh, is a business that uh, was born in 2014 with Tirumala, first acquisition of the group uh, in India. On uh, 2016, we have bought Anik, and 2019, we have bought Prabhat. All these uh, three uh, businesses, uh, they, uh, they give us pretty much as half a billion euros uh, per year. We have uh, 5,000 employees all across these three businesses, uh, being uh, uh, pretty much 50-50 between Tirumala and Prabhat and the smaller company that uh, is uh, Anik. Uh, on the biggest company, which is Tirumala, main project products sold are milk and curd. So 90, uh, 95% of the sales are sold through fresh milk and curd. Prabhat is a little bit uh, different uh, of, uh, business. We especially we do business with the B2B. Uh, so uh, different different kind of different profile of business. Uh, we have uh, Amazon as a, as a customer. We have Pizza Hut as a customer. We have Domino's as a customer. So totally different profile. And the uh, Nick, we have more than 2,000 uh, distributors in, in, the, in the center north of the uh, yeah. So quite diversified uh, portfolio, I would say, because we also sell a lot of ghee and cheese, uh, not only fresh milk in our, in our products, um, in our business. Uh, Tirumala, uh, in Tirumala, we have a specificity. Uh, out of our 6,600 uh, customers, one third of them still are paying us by cash, which is quite a traditional way of paying in India. And uh, for that, uh, that, that fact for us, it was a little bit of a not, uh, bottleneck that we had, to, we had to handle, let us say. How is uh, digitization for the business in India, let's say, compared with your other uh, affiliates? Going digital and the, the automation of the systems, uh, at least in our, in our company, was or is still very poor when compared to the other affiliates of the group. So here in India, we, we do have ACP. Uh, ACP is our ERP, but it is a very poor one, uh, not the standard solution, which give, which give us a lot of holes, let's say, on the processes, and a lot of manual data entry still is there. Uh, with banking and the, with our customers, uh, automation and, and, and digitalization still was not there. 
So uh, last year, yes, we have started uh, an, an important project of the digitalization because we, we felt that that need going going digital is not only need uh, in order to avoid disruption of the business when there is a, such an event as as COVID or such an, an event as a big war like we are experiencing in India. Going digital is also very important in order to boost us. Um, Boost us uh, cash flow and free cash flow, right? And and uh, to avoid the investment of uh, working capital by reducing uh, reducing the the SO. So it is important to give you more efficiency on uh, on the, the way of working with the, the back office uh, team. So you you need less manpower, or you use your manpower to do more added value uh, tasks and processes. Let uh, let us say. Also, also for risk management, going digital is quite quite important. You know, uh, so less risk and to avoid, to avoid fraud and to become much more compliant, uh, it is very very much needed to to go digital because manually, by doing things manually, everything is possible, especially in India. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Rupa, let me bring you in. Uh, do you see? Do you also see similar challenges uh, faced by other multinationals cl clients of the banks operating in India? Uh, from a treasury perspective, it's very important to look at how digital you can be. There are still certain processes in India which are manual. Uh, the classic example, which uh, you know Odette mentioned, uh, having around 3,000 plus uh, distributors and dealers uh, who were actually depositing uh, cash um, uh, with at 35 locations, the risk which is associated with it, you know, it's currency, uh, you could have fake currency, soil currency, transmitting it, insuring it, uh, and transmitting it to the banks. Uh, and thereafter, uh, also monitoring or, uh, you know, uh, kind of reconciling the uh, cash which is received with the invoices. Now, while this is a very specific uh, uh, with, um, uh, with Lactalis, but these kind of situations are there across uh, industry segments, across, um, uh, you know, different sectors. And um, the solutions that we put in place where we actually brought in um, a fintech partner to co-create uh, something which is very unique in uh, India. So in case of uh, Lactalis, for instance, uh, Odette actually came out uh, with a you know, with an RFP and she had a problem statement that how do I reduce cash in the system? How do I make it more uh, digital? Uh, and how do I ensure from a treasury um, management perspective or a working capital perspective, I see uh, the receivables in my account faster and it's knocked out without manual uh, efforts. And, and that's where uh, BNP came in because uh, fintechs have uh, technology. We can leverage on uh, the specific uh, technology. We can leverage on the app which has been uh, you know, provided to Lactalis uh, and the distributors and bring in our expertise to connect the two. And this, again, uh, what we have done for Lactalis, it can be replicated across other industries and across countries. Yeah, and Rupa, thank you very much. And let me get Odette uh, to, to specify uh, what are some of the sort of the uh, objectives that you've um, set for yourself as you embark on this automation uh, journey. I think it was started, I guess, in November uh, of uh, last year. Uh, what what actually, actually were the goals that you set for the project? And when you approach the banks like uh, BNP and other banks, I guess you did approach the other banks, uh, uh, what to come up with ideas? What, what were the the objectives that you set for yourselves? Absolutely. So yes, we did a tender, uh, of course. Uh, even if we have, let us say, a very ancient relationship and good relationship between our central group in in France and BNP, also in, in France, we always go to the market to best to to search for the best solution. So we did a, a tender with six banks, and uh, and yes, BNP became first. Not only uh, because they are very competitive on on the question of, uh, of uh, facilities that they they have with us, but because we needed a robust product, like, let us say, so a very robust product and a very good level of service. These were the two main the, the two main let us say um, um, criteria to choose uh, to choose the partner. So deadline for the for the for to meet to meet to, to meet the deadlines to meet the go live date. 
uh, to, to have a, ve a very good level of service and good level of responsiveness when something is there, some bottleneck is there to be able to solve uh, the, the problems. So those were the, the, the main criteria to choose uh, to choose the BNP because yes, we need it to eliminate, let us say, the payment out of the 3,500 customers that we have that are paying by cash through app. And uh, this, uh, this is still a challenge, but for some other reasons, we are online uh, since May. So this project took more or less six months. Yeah, let us say yeah, the challenges were, of course, to align and to communicate between these three teams, because we were one team that had three axes, right? So like the least team, BNP team and the FinTech team. So to coordinate these uh, three teams acting as one was, uh, was a challenge. Just to drill in a little bit more, what were the problem statements that uh, were defined and the parameters that were established at the beginning of this process? Uh, manual work, as, as, as Rupa said, we have, we have integration of communication of data, we have inbound interface and outbound interface. That, that was the core, let us say, of, uh, of the project, meaning that uh, the connection with our ERP, our ACP invoices come, goes to the app in every 15 minutes. So we, this is customizable. You can choose as, uh, as, as frequent as you want, meaning being the maximum 15 minutes. So you can manage, let us say, real-time information. Your invoices and your credit notes goes from ACP to the app every 15 minutes and the payments that are done in the app, they go to the ACP every 15 minutes. So you have real time information, the update of your current account of your customers. So it, as also the payment, one of the other criteria of, of the tool was payment invoice wise. The customer knows what invoice he's paying. He's not just paying a bulk and then the company chooses whatever invoice he's paying, right? So this is this also gives credibility to your accounts, much more easier to do balance confirmation. And the system does by itself automatically the knockoff between the invoices and the and the payments. So all these these were the requirements, let us say these were the requirements that uh, we needed for the product. Yeah, I was just wondering, Rupa, as you listened to Odette, uh, what considerations became important as you started to see if BNP Paribas can uh, play a role, can actually help? I must, um, uh, you know, definitely highlight and underline what a forward-thinking person Odette and the Lactalis team is. Because for Odette, it was not just the risk management and uh, the treasury part of it. Because we ourselves have a platform, which is an EIPP platform. And uh, if it was only a question of matching of the invoices, we could have just you know, used the platform and uh, got the dealers onboarded on the platform to execute the payments and all these aspects could have been covered. But Odette wanted to go one step further that given that, uh, you know, today uh, in a country of 1.3 billion, we have nearly 1.5 billion mobile users. Odette wanted to see if she can uh, facilitate or support her dealers and distributors who are very much small in size to see whether, you know, we give them an app. We also uh, see if we can bring in regional languages because uh, Lactalis and most of the distributors are based down south and there are multiple regional languages there. So she was looking at ideally six regional languages also. So we understood her problem statement and, uh, you know, as a bank, uh, we, uh, you know, evaluated a number of fintech companies and the evaluation process we follow is exactly the same as we do uh, globally in uh, Europe, where we have a large fintech hub and a basis that we identified this particular fintech partner introduced or that we we were as a bank we were there through all the presentations the hand holding between uh, our client which is lactalis and uh, the fintech partner and and that's how we connected the dots and ensured that we could give a complete uh, solution. So you've heard what uh, Odette said, um, you know, be it risk mitigation, be it, uh, you know, the fraud mitigation, be it in terms of, you know, the turnaround times, uh, also the manual aspect of reconciliation, all this could, uh, you know, be resolved through this solutioning that we did uh, for uh, the client, uh, for Lactalis. And of course, uh, another important area is that uh, today Lactalis uh, has uh, people deployed at these 35 locations, which were actually accepting the cash and moving the cash uh, to the bank. 
Now, these people can actually be used for activities which are even more critical um, uh, from a lactalis uh, perspective. So for us, it was very important to understand uh, Odette and lactalis uh, problem statement and then provide a solutioning uh, around it. And that's how we co-created uh, the solution, stitched it together uh, for lactalis. And Rupa, India is interestingly well placed uh, for this uh, digital initiatives, right? Seems, as you mentioned, right, 1.5 billion devices out there for 1.3 billion people. Uh, I know the Reserve Bank of India has also been uh, quite um, a, 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 a sort of a forward, a progressive in their thinking in pro, uh, promoting less uh, cash usage. That fits in a little bit with some of the initiatives uh, of the central bank as well. Absolutely right, uh, Daniel. Um, you know, RBI's mission statement is less cash and financial inclusion. Um, and bringing uh, these distributors uh, onto a digital platform reduces uh, the cash and also uh, brings in a lot of financial inclusion because these distributors now have to have bank accounts. Uh, and of course, uh, using the app, there are multiple cha channels of payments that they can use to transfer the uh, funds to uh, Lactalis. Uh, and of course, to further add to that, when you look at uh, the number of unicorns which are there in uh, India. Today, India ranks three uh, after US and uh, China in terms of the number of uh, unicorns. We have the largest number and nearly one third uh, or even a little more than a one third are engaged in the fintech uh, activities, are engaged in uh, you know, SAS uh, uh, software as a service, uh, are engaged in blockchain. So India is a perfect hub. Uh, you know, where we can create these kind of use case studies. And, you know, again, as I mentioned, technology is global. It's sector ag agnostic. It's only a question of bringing the two together. Hmm. Odette, uh, listening to you, listening to Rupa, um, it seems like uh, we've made good progress, but I'm sure there were challenges uh, in that journey, right? And I wonder what were the challenges that you faced uh, as you uh, introduce some of these initiatives uh, that you share with us today? Uh, the question is that even if this uh, mobile app is quite user friendly, let us say, because yes, the, the dealer just identify himself through a phone number, right? The phone number of his company. And uh, even if he has available uh, a lot of different uh, modalities of payment, uh, Google Pay, QR, uh, debit note, credit note, uh, UPI, and so on, e even all those facilities are there, small customers still are very, very uh, resistant and reluctant in changing into cash to, to this uh, uh, digital uh, payment mode because they know that much more easier they could be traceable uh, tax wise let us say you know when uh, when your business can be traceable through an application and your connection with the bank and all the operations you do with the banks are in a, in an application so customers get a little bit uh, let us say uh, afraid and sometimes they use the app sometimes they don't use the app so uh, we don't have still customers they pay through the app, 100%, all the invoices paid through the app. At this moment, out of the 3,500, we have uh, 200, so meaning more or less for 5% of the customers uh, were enrolled, shift to this uh, new way of payment. We are doing internal communication. We are using our uh, internal guys, commercial guys. We are giving incentive to the customers, a certain discount in order to use the app. We are giving bonuses to our commercial guys. But even so, uh, customers, uh, they are very, very resilient, let us say, in changing the way of payment by tax or for tax reasons, of course. So this is the main, main challenge. This is very cultural in India, let us say. Uh, I, I hope that we will progress in the, in, in the good sense, um, but it uh, takes time. Competition sometimes uh, start before us. Uh, some competitors of ours start this kind of, uh, of uh, projects before us, and uh, they did not get better than 60-65% of their customers paying through this kind of uh, facilities. Also, some payment by cash will remain. We are, uh, we are aware of that. but. Uh, to improve is the objective, and we will. And Odette, obviously, the uh, 
the customers are, as you mentioned, are the SMEs type uh, dealers, uh, small dealers, and so on. They're also from everywhere, right? Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Hyderabad, and so on. Um, I, I, I was just wondering, also, there is also some special relationship with uh, your team on the commercial side, on the sales side, which has strong ties with some of these uh, small and medium uh, dealers that you work with. Um, how, uh, how challenging was this sort of internally as well to uh, get uh, your commercial team on board uh, on this journey? Uh, it was also a big challenge. Still today, we don't have uh, the support 100% of, uh, of these guys. Even, and I, again, I stress, even if we are giving some bonuses to them, because, you know, another specificity of India, specificity of India is also the real close connection between commercials and the customers. So mm -hmm. there is so much of a, of a relationship, let us say, and uh, that some some habits are there, and uh, even to convince the, the our commercial guys that this is good for the company, they know that sometimes this is not good for them because they have special relations. So the languages was the list of our problems because as we are organized by region, so we do have commercial guys in different regions and they talk different languages. So the, the language itself was not the, the 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 problem. The problem is some very close relationship that exists between the customer and the commercial guy even if some inquiries inquiries we did at first with because we had the, uh, another consultant to help us on, on this change management and some inquiry it was done to the customers and one uh, very simple response from the customers was i will change to the app only if my commercial the commercial I work with tell me to, tells me to. So at this point, at this point is the the, the the strength of the relationship between the commercial guy and the customer. Only if the commercial guy says, "Okay, it's okay," if you change from cash to, to to app, he will do. So this is quite uh, quite interesting because uh, in some other parts of the world, th this problem is not there. <laughs> very, very. Oh, that, that's really, really interesting, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a reflection of the unique relationship between the commercial guys and also your customers, right? In a way, when you think about change management, which you uh, alluded to, uh, which is a key part of this whole process, uh, what what uh, what steps are you taking uh, in order to uh, facilitate that whole process? Yes. Uh, as we feel that we are in a, a little bit, not in, in a dead end, but uh, we are in a plateau uh, because for the last of two months, the number of customers that should be enrolled are not growing. We are putting on board also the dispatcher guys, meaning the transporters themselves, the, themselves because the transporter, they leave the crates at the doorstep of the, of the, um, of the customers. So not only commercial guys have strong relationships with the customers, but also the dispatch guys, so the transporters. Uh, so with the, uh, my my colleague of supply chain, we are starting also to create awareness to the dispatcher guys, to the transporters, and uh, they also will be receiving a bonus in order to help to download the app and to use the, uh, uh, the, the app. Uh, at last, but not the least, we are deciding to penalize our customers if they don't use the app. Uh, this is maybe something new. Uh, apparently, our competitors did not do this. Uh, at, a, at a certain point of time, we must say, we must change. So the money we are losing by leakages, by fraud, by not being compliant. Uh, so uh, we cannot take this anymore. And yes, we have to, ha we have to help Indian uh, banking system in order to get more customers. And uh, at the end of October, if the figure of enrollment of the customers does not go up, we will penalize some pesa per liter uh, to each customer. Hmm. And uh, what's interesting as well, uh, and Odette and Rupa, uh, is that some of your customers are also probably part of the unbank segment as well, um, without perhaps a bank account, right? Is this also a bit of a challenge and maybe your efforts to contribute to uh, things like financial inclusion? I think Rupa mentioned that as well. Uh, you need to have the banking system or the banks actually to cooperate, to engage and drive this process. And maybe your thoughts on that. 
Absolutely. So we also have uh, put ourselves available in order to have the list of the customers that they don't have a current account, they just have a saving account. And for that fact, some commissions they must pay when they do deposits on their own accounts. So yes, we have heard, uh, we have had that feedback also. And we put ourselves available uh, to the customers uh, that we can speak to our own banks in order to uh, serve as an intermediate and serve as a guarantee, let us say, in order to facilitate the access of these very small, small, uh, small customers to have a current account. Because of course, small customers, they have a highly financial risk. So maybe banks don't like to, to bet on this kind of, uh, of customers. And also it is, let us say, our social responsibility uh, in order to help on the, uh, on, to put together or to put closer this kind of customers and the banking system. We are, we are on it also. Lactalis had a problem statement. Just using the problem statement, um, all of us have worked together, uh, have been agile to focus on that transformation. And if you look at it, the transformation is not just within Lactalis, it's within Lactalis, it's within uh, the commercial teams, their finance teams, their cash, uh, you know, the, uh, the collecting people, but also amongst their distributors and dealers, you know, which from a cash, you're moving uh, the entire order to cash to a digitized system. You're also empowering them by uh, supporting them in the financial inclusion by helping them to open accounts. Um, Odette understands uh, and Lactalis understands the problem that uh, the dealers and distributors have that, you know, when they have this cash because they are sales that the dealers are making are in cash. So uh, it's it's much more easier for them to just go and deposit that cash with those 35 locations. But now they need to deposit the cash with the bank and which means that they need to have a bank account. And if they need to have a bank account, that's where, uh, you know, Odette and Lactalis are supporting them, um, you know, with uh, uh, any guarantees or any other support uh, which is required. So this agility to transform is very important. and. This agility will actually define uh, the future that, uh, you know, Lactalis wants and that the, this industry sector uh, really is looking towards. By the way, uh, Rupa and Odette, uh, and, and Odette, probably you can chime in first. Uh, what, what are the risks, uh, actually, that you, you touched on it a little bit, right? A bit of uh, sort of fraud issues and so on. But what are the risks uh, that actually you were faced with as a result of the previous kind of setup and what you're trying to change? What are the issues okay. and what are, what are the costs that you're facing with? A lack of compliance, not only because cash disappears, but also because I have to do uh, some insurance uh, policies to, to cover these losses. Also because we do receive fake money. Uh, also because we do receive very small bills that are no longer accepted by, by bank system. Um, we did our account and this almost reached the half billion euros per year. So this is a lot of money, a lot of crores are there. So half a million euros per year. So this is not negligible at all. Uh, my cash flow is being dilapidated on this amount, on the account of this uh, kind of fraud, let us say. So this is quite, quite important. So we could not let, not do anything about it uh, for several reasons. Not, not, it is the money that we are losing, but of course the digitalization is, is important to, to avoid the disruption and, uh, if something happens, as I start to, to say at the, at the beginning, it, it is the way forward. Let us say we cannot go back on going digital. There is no way back. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and when you think about this whole process, also Rupa, what was necessary to bring this project to where it is uh, today? Uh, and take, take, take us through that whole process of the co-creation, actually. What's important is, uh, you know, the problem statement, understanding what exactly um, our client Lactalis and uh, Odette uh, wanted, solutioning around it, 
very, very critical because unless you understand the problem statement, the solutioning doesn't uh, come. And, and this was clearly a transformational uh, project because uh, it touched different uh, parameters, not just the risk management, um, not just, uh, you know, receiving the funds uh, in time, but it also covered uh, the mindset of uh, the distributors and dealers, how to make it easier for them to access it. That's where we sat down, brainstormed, we had multiple whiteboarding sessions, uh, multiple meetings with Odette and her team uh, in their office uh, in uh, Chennai to see what is the best solution that can be uh, structured. Post which we went into the market uh, and we evaluated the different fintechs and their offerings. There are multiple fintechs in the off uh, market offering similar solutions. Uh, as I'd mentioned earlier uh, at BNP Paribas, we have a selection matrix. Uh, it's a very rigid process which is uh, followed for identification. Once that's done, we uh, bring the fintech and uh, um, uh, the uh, you know our client together so that we can together discuss on what are the steps to be taken to achieve the final milestone which is uh, the goal life and at this point of time it's also the confidence that uh, you know our client which is lactalis has uh, in bnp uh, because uh, the clients don't know the fintechs it means that when they are partnering with the fintech, it's also the confidence that they have that the bank is there, is there as a bridge between uh, between our clients and uh, the fintech companies. In fact, I used to joke with Lactalis that my team needed to be paid by Lactalis because they were always in the Lactalis uh, office. They were there as part of all the meetings uh, with uh, the IT, with the fintech, uh, the integration, the go live. And even today, there are uh, meetings which happen more than twice a week to just see that things are moving uh, smoothly. So it's it's not a it's not that you know you you just connect the fintech uh, with uh, the partner it's also about the mis the information flow the erp integration explaining uh, to lactalis or even to the fintech partner that you know what exactly is required so from a dealer perspective the dealer should you know there is a facility to click multiple uh, invoices there is there should be a facility to make a payment against each and every invoice they should you know we, we even discuss because you have the ability to make part invoice payments also uh, you have the ability to make payments against different types of uh, payment mechanism so it also had to be discussed with lactalis that what is the preferred uh, areas that you would like you know for instance uh, are you fine with rtgs neft imps upi uh, credit card so we sat and we validated and selected the ones which would be the most beneficial from both the distributor as well as uh, from Lactalis. So it was uh, quite an implementation uh, project and it had phases and uh, it, it required immense coordination between all the three parties, which is uh, Lactalis, ourselves and our uh, fintech uh, partner. If I may just uh, add a bit more, uh, you know, just um, taking on the line of the multiple unicorns in India. Um, BNP Paribas in India, we are also um, creating a fintech uh, hub. In fact, we have a fintech uh, event which we are organizing uh, in, in November wherein we're taking problem statements from various clients and uh, we have multiple uh, fintech um, uh, companies which we have validated which will also be there so that we can connect uh, the two now when we talk about problem statements daniel uh, the problem statements need not specifically be only um, uh, something from the banking uh, perspective uh, it can be uh, things like um, uh, dealer validations, you know, the KYCs which need to be done regularly. We have fintechs which can actually support clients uh, in that. Uh, again, there are certain regulatory requirements which need to be validated. These can also be done uh, by the fintech uh, uh, companies. Uh, you need um, client, uh, you need sales or distributor incentivization. So you have fintech companies which can cater uh, to that. There are fintechs which can cater on the supply chain and the logistics part of it. So there are multiple fintechs that we have validated as, uh, as a bank. And uh, of course, uh, you know, depending on 
upon the requirements of the clients, uh, we connect the fintech uh, with uh, uh, with our uh, clients. Uh, this is uh, this actually comes down from our uh, global CEO's uh, mission statement. So we have an ambition 2025, which is a GTS. When we say GTS, G stands for growth, T for technology, and S for sustainability. So uh, our fintech initiative is very very aligned uh, with the T of the technology. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, clearly a lot of work and trying to understand a lot of the fintechs. So that, uh, what has been uh, your overall experience? Uh, uh, I know that this project may have taken a little bit longer that you, than you anticipated, right? Can you share with mm -hmm. us? And especially what aspects that you're most satisfied with? Absolutely. So the project took a little bit more time than I was uh, expecting. Um, Especially due to change management uh, issues, of course, uh, also not not only technical technical issues, but change management issues and this coordination of these three teams was not so evident. Uh, so maybe at the beginning I had underestimated the uh, the challenge. But uh, anyway, uh, if I could go back in time, one way of assessing uh, projects is this one. No, if I could go back in time, would I do it again with BNP? For sure, yes, I would do it again with uh, with the BNP. Thank you. We are, we are happy with the product. So again, the, the, the problem is not the product. The problem is the culture of the country where we are implementing this product. Those are the main issues. To do change of um, culture, uh, a thought process of, uh, of, uh, of the way people live, no? Uh, so also companies as a response, have a responsibility on uh, on doing that. Big companies have responsibility to transform and to change the world. Uh, so our my quest is is yes to keep on enrolling customers from cash to uh, app mobile app. This is the objective, and uh, I am quite happy with uh, with the result. Uh, still challenges are there, uh, but they are linked, as I said uh, before, with the uh, change management and to change the culture and to change the way people think uh, about business, about business and taxes, especially taxes. Yeah. Yeah, Odette, what, what aspects are you most satisfied with at this point in time? This point in time, I'm quite happy with the way we have worked because as Rupa said, so good communication was there. Every time I raised my hand, I had a responsiveness, right? So. So the way we could work, it was very, very positive. So very good teamwork. Teamwork was really the surplus. And uh, to be able to to co to co produce or to to co to co do this uh, this product that is, I believe, a little bit innovative. Uh, I think the other apps that are there that uh, enable customers to pay through app, they it's they are not. Uh, invoice wise this was also a, a plus that we wanted to put product and uh, we did it so i am also quite happy with that and i am quite happy that uh, for the customers that are paying my team has much less work much less administrative yeah. work and that's important rupa, rupa final thoughts right uh, what's next and uh, you touch on it um, what do you think are the future business opportunities uh, that you see and how clients are likely to benefit uh, from what is an interesting co-creation journey with Lactalis India. Agility is very, very critical. Uh, there are different areas that uh, the treasurers are focusing on, uh, you know, CFOs, uh, forward-looking CFOs like uh, Odette are focusing on uh, different areas. And that's where uh, we come in as a bank uh, because uh, we have the channels, we have the platforms. Uh, if there is something very, very specific which is required uh, from a technology perspective, you have our fintech partners which can bring in that specific customization which is required. And as a bank, we will integrate and connect this uh, and create a uh, you know a, a create a channel for our clients to uh, address their uh, problem uh, statements and that's where uh, we as a bank are focusing on also creating a hub a fintech hub uh, in india 
And uh, in fact, uh, I, I must add that besides the different uh, types of fintechs that we are working with, another uh, critical area uh, which we are developing uh, ourselves is a new uh, product called Doc Factory, which is uh, based on machine learning and uh, AI. Uh, so today you have a number of these uh, invoices, um, uh, which you know are built by our clients to uh, their distributors or to their um, end uh, clients. And uh, against that, uh, if if it's a larger institutional client, you would have a payment which is made and an advice which comes in. This advice uh, can be actually uh, you know machine read uh, by our uh, system. Uh, it's an in-house uh, solution and the information flows into the ERP to knock off on the accounts uh, receivable. Again, a completely digital and automated uh, solution. So these are some of the areas that we are working in. Today, uh, cash management per se, I would say is extremely commoditized. What's important is the next step to see how focused we are uh, to meet uh, the future needs of our uh, treasurers and uh, CFOs. And that's where we come in to co-create the solutions with our uh, FinTech uh, partners. Fantastic, yeah, we're looking forward to that. This has been a very, very interesting discussion on a case study, uh, driving efficiency with technology. Uh, what we heard today, easier, sometimes easier said than done. I guess Odette will agree with that, but the best part is, Progress is clearly underway. Thank you, Odette, and thank you, Rupa, for sharing with us, and thank you for listening in another edition of the Asset uh, Thinking Treasure series a video in association with BNP Paribas. Thank you very much, both, for your time.